one question is, uh, do you feel that you have support of the school board and the faculty and staff in moving forward with this process? Is there much resistance within the school system in doing this work? Um, I think we have full, full support of the board and the staff. And I think, you know, part of that was creating our new mission and our vision and our values. And that's now board policy 101. What, what we, what I put up on slides as, as our mission and vision and values, if you go to our board, if you go to our board website and look at our policy and you pull up board policy, our educational philosophy, it is that mission and vision and values. And, and to me, I think that's, that's the signal that our board says, this matters, this is important, this is who we are. They, they voted to say this is board policy 101. Um, and so now, as we take action and as we work towards this, we're saying our mission and vision and values is board policy and it was created by our staff. It's who we are and it's who we say we wanna be. Um, and so it's not just Mark, it's not just a few, it's not just a handful of teachers that care about this. It's, it's in board policy that this is who we are and who, what we're gonna be about. So yeah, I, I, I feel strongly that our board is, is supportive of the work, that they've put it in policy, that this is who we are and this is the way that we become who we say we want to be. Um, so piggyback off in that. So <clears throat> there are families with multiracial children or children of color. And um, they've personally encountered conversations with teachers where they've tried to address race and they've gotten comments like, I don't even notice. They're, they're all just children. How do you approach multi like, uh, how do you, approach a colorblind rhetoric, um, which is common in our community and very invalidating um, as well as unhelpful to students of color. I think you do it by learning together. Um, I grew up in Jefferson, Iowa. I, gra I graduated with 89 people and everybody looked exactly like me. And right, it, it took it, it takes an opportunity to learn together, um, I think, to have a different, to be able to take on a different perspective. Um, and again, I go back to, we, we engaged in PDSA in a safe way so people could become familiar with the process. We didn't tackle, um, we didn't tackle uh, anti-racist beliefs and we didn't tackle bias in our schools because our staff wasn't ready to do that. They're not all, they're not in a, in a place where that's going to be a comfortable um, conversation. We had to learn, learn the process in a safer dynamic and in a safer conversation. So now we can start to apply that process to more difficult and more challenging conversations. And then also I, I go back to the idea that um, these things are now, uh, they're now, they're, they're now our policy. Um, unfortunately in education, we work in a culture where a lot of times, um, people don't see the system and our system sometimes puts people in a position where they can be the king or queen of their kingdom. And that kingdom is their classroom or their building and they don't feel connected to the bigger system and, and, uh, and they don't feel accountable to that larger system. And so building a culture where we're all accountable to our larger system creates a, a culture where we're accountable to our larger mission, vision, and values. And, um, and now people like me, right, we're, we're accountable for holding the system accountable and for engaging in those conversations um, that have made people feel not heard and have made people feel dismissed and helping that not be a repeated thing that happens. Um, the next question is about curriculum. Uh, it says it's important to update the curricula to reflect all people's contributions and the facts 
from a diverse perspective rather than from white privilege? How um, is the district's efforts in addressing the curricula? I think that's one of the things that we're part why we're partnering with Westwind, right? We have we have a curriculum review process. We need assistance and we need guidance in how to make sure that that curriculum review process doesn't allow for those things to happen. And so, I mean, every school district has gone through and has developed curriculum review processes, um, but we keep doing we keep getting what we've gotten, and so without without changing our process without embedding things like what uh, we're using with Westwind um, with our return to learn plan without embedding purposeful processes into that review process, uh, it won't change. And so um, working with Westwind to embed the right kind of analysis, the right kind of conversation and the right people at the table, I think is how you overcome that curriculum that is very, um, comes from one perspective.